Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike from CureMD, and uh, thank you very much for joining the webinar today, which is basically on mastering meaningful use. And just before we go ahead and start off with the demo, I wanted to give you guys a quick reminder of the user conference that is taking place on November 9th and 10th, and we're already expecting more than a thousand people to be joining us, and we're looking forward uh, to welcoming all of you at the user conference. So. Taking you forward into the webinar, let's actually go ahead and begin. Meaningful use has been a very uh, hot topic over the past couple of years, and it it's right to say that it should be because of uh, the incentives that are related with it, and as well as the certified EMR that providers need to get and make sure that they achieve uh, the meaningful use guidelines as well. So. During this webinar, we're going to be covering two aspects. One is we're going to quickly take a, a quick overview on meaningful use stage one till stage two, and then we'll go ahead and discuss on how to prepare for stage two meaningful use. So starting off, stage one was basically all about data uh, capture and sharing, as you all know, where you had to meet certain menu and core set objectives uh, to go ahead and uh, perform meaningful use. Stage two is going to be an advanced process of stage one. So basically, uh, your your compliance is just going to go ahead and increase as uh, CPOE was 30% in stage one. The compliance target now, I believe it's about 60% for stage two. And in stage three, it's basically going to be improved outcomes where you're going to be looking at more of a, a pay for performance uh, sort of criteria. Just to uh, get a quick recap for uh, the number of providers who've actually uh, registered for meaningful use since uh, February 2014, over 400,000 providers have actually registered for meaningful use, and the government has actually rolled out over seven billion in incentive payments. Uh, a quick look on how you would be uh, able to capture those incentives over uh, over the period. Now, for medic for Medicaid, uh, it's a six-year program during which you can go ahead and achieve uh, the meaningful use incentives and you can earn up to uh, 64,000 in payments. Now, uh, for Medicaid, the program starts from 2011 all the way to 2016. And as you can see, the breakdown from year one all the way to year six, how you would be achieving those incentives. So year one was basically just to go ahead, purchase, install, and train yourselves on a certified EMR and then basically by the time you reach year three where you have to go ahead and upgrade the software <coughs> maintain and train is always going to be a part but as you can see that year one is where you're uh, roughly about 20k is available uh, over the first period and after that for each uh, four year for the five year period after that it's 8500 available in incentives. And looking at Medicare, now Medicare basically uh, is going to be a five-year program and available over this uh, period is 44K in payments, where in the first stage is that was 2011 to 2012, where providers basically had to go ahead and adopt an EHR. So you simply needed to go ahead and adopt a meaningful use EHR so that you can go, be eligible for uh, meaningful use and start collecting your incentives. And many, uh, the, the main problem with Medicare that a lot of providers are facing is the reporting period when they need to report and uh, focusing on penalties as well. So one thing that providers need to know, for, for those people who have not attested for meaningful use stage one so far, they will be uh, penalized in 2015. I believe it's 1% uh, that they will be penalized. And But the good news for them is that they can still go ahead and attest for stage two so that they don't get penalized in 2016 for the uh, stage two penalties. And uh, in terms of the reporting period, for those who have already attested for, uh, and performed stage one, uh, the, their reporting period would be any quarter uh, within this uh, within this year, and for those uh, who who are still performing it, uh, they can choose any 90 days over uh, the calendar year. Now, 
So here's the question. So whether you have attested for meaningful use in 2011 or 2012, and <coughs> the next part is that you must meet the stage two meaningful use in 2014. So just a quick comparison between stage one and stage two. Stage one basically covered about uh, 15 core objectives, and, five, and you had to perform five out of the 10 menu set objectives that were available. Stage two, obviously, is going to be an advanced version. So that means that there are more core measures for you to perform. There are going to be fewer menu, uh, me menu set measures, but the threshold is going to go ahead and increase. So let's take a quick look at what has been uh, retained for stage one and what has been consolidated. So as you can see, the list right here. And here are some of the new measures that have been included in stage two. Secure messaging is part of the core message, and uh, sending out imaging results, family histories, cancer cases, specialized registries, and progress notes. So these are some of the new measures that have been included in stage two. Now, one of the things that you need to realize is that in order to go ahead and achieve meaningful use, you must be using a certified meaningful use EMR. So please uh, visit the ONC website and for whichever EMR you're using, uh, check their credentials and the certification as well. Now here is what the reporting period looks like. So you guys can go ahead and get a quick glance of how you would be reporting for from 2011 all the way till 2014. Now, in order to prepare for uh, meaningful use stage two, there are three s steps that basically need to be performed. Number one is either uh, you upgrade your EMR to the stage two uh, certified EMR or replace it if your vendor uh, has not met the certification. One of the major issues that has been uh, faced by providers in the industry today is that a lot of vendors were not able to meet uh, the meaningful use stage two certification. Uh, roughly, there were about uh, over 500 vendors that have still not received their meaningful use certification. And that is obviously a big dilemma for the providers. So uh, once again, the focus is going to be on uh, meaningful use. I urge providers, if you haven't upgraded or replaced to a certified stage two vendor, I suggest that you do that as soon as possible so that you avoid those penalties. Moving forward, stage two, we're going to discuss the thresholds as well, and you need to prepare for them. So you need to be aware of the increase in those thresholds and what you need to perform. And number three is to go ahead and create a good patient engagement strategy. So let's actually go ahead and move over to that. So one of the key questions that you need to be asking your vendors uh, when, it, when you upgrade or are replacing is that whether your vendor has deployed the 2014 certified edition to all clients and will has have they actually uh, been certified as a complete EHR or a modular EHR? And do the vendor, do your vendor also provide meaningful use support and training uh, as part of the regular pricing, or do they charge you extra for that? And do they also have the required interfaces? And whether it's being provided for free or that's something that you would be charged for extra. Now, for for meaningful use stage two, you need to go ahead and ensure that you have a good patient engagement strategy. So here's a quick view on uh, QRMD's workflow for uh, a patient engagement strategy. So you can see all the way from check in to check out, uh, we've go gone ahead and covered everything within the system. Here are some of the examples of the thresholds that have actually been increased from stage one to two. So as you can see, the first one is for CPOE, it was 30%. Uh, was the uh, was the target that was to be achieved in stage one? Now that has been increased to 60% with the addition of 30% labs and radiology as well. Uh, prescriptions have increased by 10%. You can see a 30% increase in uh, demographics as well. And if you take a quick glance, you can go ahead and see all the changes that have come in. Okay, so here are the rest of the measures that you can see. Now, what are the main objectives for the stage two uh, meaningful use is obviously the inclusion of the HIE man, uh, mandate. So we're, in order to share data across the continuum it has become necessary as well. So as you can see, uh, in 2011, 
uh, you were only required to be sending data from the lab to the provider or the provider to the pharmacy, et cetera. But now it's, it's, it's changed into a whole network where from the provider to the lab, to, from inter-office, sharing data with the hospital, with the patient itself, et cetera, has all become included. Here are some of the performance on the MU2 behavioral measures, as you can see right here in the chart showing. And this is covering uh, the Q3 2014 period. Once again, here is the patient engagement strategy that we, sh uh, that we urge providers to go ahead and follow, where you need to ensure that you, as a provider, are well informed. The patient has been engaged and empowered to go ahead and use uh, their, they can go, they can download their data, and w w the easiest way for them to actually do that is going with a vendor who has uh, a patient portal service available for their patients as well, so that they can go ahead and view all of their data, download it as well. So as you can see here, the two things that were already present within patient engagement for stage one were clinical summary and patient education, but now <clears throat> added to that patient access, which obviously can be done to the patient portal and the secure messaging as well. So you guys need to ensure that you, uh, uh, your vendors actually implemented a patient portal solution that allows patients to engage with their demographics, financial, health information, and you, the provider needs to actually benefit uh, from this and the patients should know uh, the key factors for the patient portal and should be educated a little bit on meaningful use as well so uh, the, the, they know what the provider needs from them as well. So a quick stat, as you can see right here, that 96% of the QRMD physicians who participated for meaningful use have actually achieved meaningful use. And uh, once again, we'll be covering more on the stage two requirements in the coming days, and uh, we're more than welcome for you guys to go ahead and shoot out any questions that you have, and we'll be ha happy to answer them. Uh, thank you once again for everyone for joining in the webinar, and we'll be uh, speaking. <coughs> we'll be <coughs> hoping to see you in the coming weeks for the next sessions that are coming in. Thank you, and have a